the God y'all actually nothing <clears throat> yeah I just want to do this video because um uh, a lot of people been getting at me and I ain't been responding not because I was trying to be a dick or something like that I've been off the off the radar for a little while uh, not doing YouTube videos not tweeting really really just start tweeting again really I'm not a big Twitter dude anyway you know what I'm saying I've had an account for a long time but if you look at my the my number of tweets in comparison to other people it's just a fraction because you know for a while I just had an account and I was never on there remember back when I was on the radio show I didn't even know the power and the reach Twitter had in terms of reaching people and having access to especially guys in the boxing world um, I just didn't know the the reach that it had until later on uh, and that's when I really started tweeting I still don't tweet on the regular like everybody else I may put random comments out there uh, shit that I'm doing uh, maybe stuff going on uh, at the time in, in real life and I just put a little rant out there real quick just not not just how other people use it as um, uh, one of their sources of communication on a daily basis that's not me uh, if you need me hit me on the hip you know what I'm saying call me up or come through uh, I don't even fool with email like that. You know what I'm saying? Email for me is contacts to my industry. What gets me out there and get me these contracts to go inside these plants and get this bread. But uh, uh, for those that's been wondering where I've been at, you know, I've just been, you know, taking care of my family. You know what I'm saying? Um, going inside these plants, making that bread. For the first quarter of the year, it was real successful I was all over I was in uh, Illinois I was in different parts of Texas I didn't do a whole whole lot of plane traveling and stuff like that um, I'm hoping I don't have to do that in the coming months I would like to be local but you know in my field you know when you're talking about oil or chemicals you go where the bread is and if bread if the contract says yo we got work in Conductorsville, South Dakota. I don't even. I know that's not a city or a town. I just made it up. But if it says that's where the work is, you're gonna go get that bread. I mean, if you don't, somebody else will. So you just do what you gotta do. And it usually, I mean, it pans out. You know, you just gotta be away for a little minute. But you don't pay for anything. You know, you just go, you get the bread, and you bring it home. So that's what I've just been up to. And you know, even when I wasn't getting that bread when I got back from um, doing these jobs these contracts you know I took my wife to uh, she been trying to get me to take her on a cruise for a while and I don't fool with that water like that you know what I'm saying I went on a deep uh, I went on a fishing trip years ago like 200 some odd miles off the coast and I got seasick like a motherfucker, man. And if you ain't ever been seasick, that's something you do not want to experience at all. Uh, I'll give you a, a brief on how it was at that time. But, you know, I didn't know that you don't look at the water. You know what I'm saying? And I was looking at the water the whole time when we left the coast. And um, as we were all on the outside of the boat just chilling, talking, and stuff like that, and I was looking at the motion of the ocean, as they say, and over a little bit of time, man, I got nauseated and started getting dizzy, and next thing you know, I Earl, and I'm going to tell you, this is not just like regular throwing up. It's like everything that was within me projected at 100 PSI, you know what I'm saying, from, straight from the stomach out, I mean, none of that fluid or anything touched my teeth, my tongue, it went straight from that hole out my mouth like a damn water hose. You know what I'm saying? I never threw up like that before. You know what I'm saying? It didn't touch any part of my mouth. It just projected at 200 PSI uh, pressure. Seemed like. You know what I'm saying? And I got so doggone dizzy now when I went inside the boat. 
I couldn't walk. I was bumping into stuff. Oh, man, I broke out in a cold sweat. I was throwing up till I had nothing else in me. Even when I completely depleted every bit of food or, or fluid inside of me, I was still going through the motion. You know what I'm saying? Even though nothing was coming out. It's like my body just kept trying to rid itself of every con, all the contents within me. And it was just terrible, man. It, it was just, I had a high temperatures, cold sweats. I couldn't move. I was dizzy. And uh, it was just bad, man. Even when I got up and crawled my way into the restroom, I had no coordination. I was dizzy. And I pissed all over that restroom trying to aim at that toilet, man. I <laughs> Man, you don't ever, ever want to experience seasickness, man. I would have rather them toss me over the boat and let the sharks have my ass. That's how bad it feels. You'd rather go ahead and get ate up and take yourself out the game. It was a horrible case of seasickness. So since that time, I just would not fool with that water at all. But uh, I took my woman on a cruise, and um, this time I, I learned my lesson. And besides, I, I, we were on a big vessel. It wasn't like I was just on a... Uh, a regular boat you know what I'm saying um, the boat we were on initially when I went fishing it wasn't small but it wasn't no vessel and when you're on a big ass vessel you really don't feel the motion of the ocean it's really not like a herky jerky movement your equilibrium is not easily thrown off uh, they say you don't feel it that was the lie that was told to me that you just don't feel it that's bullshit you still feel it you still feel that water you just don't feel the constant moving back and forth, you know what I'm saying? Like you would if you were just like in a canoe or something like that. So it was more bearable. Uh, we, I got a badass room, uh, a sweet balcony view. Uh, it was real tight. And um, come to find out, you know, being out there on that water, we went to Mexico. Um, I took that trip instead of going to Jamaica because I didn't want to be out on the water for seven damn days, you know. You feel like a prisoner after a while. You can't go anywhere but on the boat. And the boat is so big. It's like a hotel on the water. You have so many different things you can do. You have bars all over the place. They got swimming pools, casinos. They got uh, theaters where they do live performances. They have, a, they have clubs. They have jazz clubs. They have fancy little restaurants. So it's a lot of stuff. They keep you busy while you're on the boat that's the good thing about it you're never really bored and if you don't want to do anything you can always go to your room and sleep um they purposely don't have a lot of channels on tv and you know showing a lot of movies because they don't want to keep you in your room they want you out of the room so you can actually enjoy all the festivities on the boat because they want your bread i mean you're gonna cough that bread up so if you go on a cruise take a couple of take at least a stack with you and you'll really have a have a good time you know what i'm saying and your woman, though, she'll never forget it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, for guys that constantly every day keep themselves on the Internet, doing videos and not really leaving the house, you really miss out on some of the treasures that the world got to show you. you got to get away from the computer. you got to get out the house and experience some of this shit. Check this shit out. Shit was tight, man. Shit was real tight. I had a great time, relieve a whole lot of stress. Um, like I said, man, you gotta get out there and, and see some of this shit. Do what you gotta do. If you can't afford it, you know, no disrespect to anybody who ball on the budget and stuff like that. Those people on the boat <clears throat> who they couldn't do everything, but you know what? They couldn't miss out. They didn't miss out on stuff like that. You gotta see that type of stuff. And I know the camera don't do it no justice, but when you out of, out there on that balcony, sitting out there and just, you know what I'm saying, just seeing that shit, man. It's like, you know what you're working for, you know what I'm saying? 
But anyway, outside of all that, your boy just been, uh, like I said, I ain't been plugged in with boxing. Me, I'm a shooter. I'm a gunner. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I like to, I like to, you know, go shoot guns at the gun range. Um, we have some outdoor ranges out here, and one of them was just, I mean, it would be cool. Like, there's one gun range we got. Uh, it's not too far from here. It's an outdoor range, but I don't like the rules that they got. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you bring a rifle out there, you can only have one round in it at a time. And to me, I mean, that's not cool for me. And then, you know, if you got a rifle, you can only shoot it in one part of the range as opposed to shooting handguns in the other part of the range. And it just it just makes for a very unpleasant time at the range. So I kind of traveled towards uh, Texas City to uh, go to the range. And, uh, man, I've been adding to my gun collection. I think I'm a, a addict, man. As a matter of fact... I just got this the other day, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a revolver guy. Some of you guys out there may like uh, the semi-automatics with clips and, you know, teachers on, you know what I'm saying? I have, I have a, guns like that too, but I'm a revolver dude. And this is not for kids. This is not, definitely not a toy. Um, this is for adults. And I don't condone violence or anything like that. Damn sure don't want no ATF showing up at my house um but this is a uh this is a smith and wesson 629 so 44 mag smith and wesson let me see that there it is and i've been wanting this for a long time now the the other revolver i got i got a 500 smith and wesson magnum but if you ever shot a 500 mag, you already know it's a 50 caliber. And uh, even though it handles very well as a revolver, it has so much kickback. You see, I got a Desert Eagle 2. I've shown that on a, another video. And that's also a 50 caliber. Uh, the, the Desert Eagle is much heavier. Uh, it handles well. But for me... I shoot shoot it all the time, but the shells when they pop out, they hit me in my face every damn time. So when I shoot, I gotta wear my hat kind of like this. So when I'm shooting, the shells will hit me in the top of my hat, and it won't hurt as bad. Uh, not hurt. I mean, it don't hurt, but you know, it's annoying because it kind of throw you off. Their 500 mag is lighter as a 50 caliber. It's much lighter than a uh, than a Desert Eagle, but um. It has more kickback and it's a bit more powerful. In fact, the rounds, I don't know if I got any ammo down here. Yeah, I got some ammo. I got some ammo. This is a round from the 500 mag. And uh, some of you are probably thinking, oh, that's the size of a 45. No, it ain't. This is a 50 cal. And here is a uh, a round from the Desert Eagle. This is also, which is also a 50 cal. Neither one of these are like a 45. 45 is much smaller. This is from the 500 mag. This is from the Desert Eagle. Not too much of a difference. They both can fit inside of a. Uh, 500 mag, but don't shoot no 50 AE out of no 500 mag. It's not designed for that that gun. And don't shoot no 500 mag ground from the desert. Even in fact, it won't even go in. It won't even go in the chamber. So uh, in fact, here as a matter of fact, here is my um. Here's a 500 mag right here. See how big it is? Like the brothers. Look at the size difference. I'm trying to raise it up in the drive. You know what I'm saying? This is a 44 mag, 500 mag. 
it's a beautiful weapon, man. I'm like I said, I'm a revolver guy, and I love to shoot. I'm a shooter. But this is the one I've been wanting. This is the one you can carry around in your truck. Like, if you shoot that file, and like, let's say somebody tries to accost you, uh, attack you, or something like that, or you're trying to um, protect your family, don't shoot no 500 mag. That 500 mag can take down a bear. And, you know, it's, it's more powerful than a 460 at the muzzle. And you know, 460. I've seen a, a video on YouTube when somebody shot a bear through the shoulder and shattered the shoulder, and the exit wound on the other side was large. Dropped the bear with one shot. You can kill deer with this, with a handgun, with this handgun, with the 500 mag that is. So, if you were to shoot at somebody trying to protect yourself, you still got to be responsible for that bullet goes, and it goes and goes and goes and goes. So the 44 mag is not as powerful. It's still, it used to be the most powerful handgun in the world. I think it was the Model 29. That's a more modern version of 629. But that was back in the 80s when it was the most powerful. You know, things have changed since then. And they have several guns that are more powerful than the 44 mag. They got the 454. Um, that's more powerful. Uh, that's like a much, like an upgraded version of the 45 Colt. The 450, 454, and you can sh hunt game with with that uh, handgun as well. But uh, that's my that's my my gun of choice right here, the 629. I've been wanting it for a while. Uh, the revolver game is not really big right now. Everybody's on this AR kick. Everybody got to go for an AR, AR. So Smith and Wesson is not pumping out these revolvers like they once were because the market is not calling for them but I like revolvers so I had to go through hell to find that motherfucker also I got a uh, I've added to my collection I got two ARs actually y'all not in the guns y'all can cut the video off and I ain't trying to bore you this is just what I do. This is what I've been on. AR-15. Has everything you want in a good AR. Has a 1 in 7 twist. Chrome line barrel. Uh, chrome line gas chamber. Uh, bolt carrier. Has a shell deflector. Dust cover. Forward assist. Only thing I really don't have on this thing. I got some sighting on it. That's my sighting. And believe me, I do damage with just that. I don't really need the scopes. I'll get one later. It's just, I don't have the super tactical model. You got guys who got ARs and they want to put flashlights and laser sightings and fancy little grips and stuff like that. And all the stuff that they use like in Afghanistan or something like that. And to me, I'm not going inside no building. I'm not going to clear the perimeter, so to speak. Uh, I'm not going to put on the SWAT team gear. I don't need it for that purpose. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a shooter. You know what I'm saying? I'm a gunner. That's it. But uh, this is a very good AR. I love it. It shoots very well. Also got a... Uh Give me a second. Here's my Colt. It's also another AR. Like I said, I got two of them, the twin. And this pretty much has a lot of the other fe the features that that one has. One in second twist, chrome line barrel, everything. Shell deflector, dust cover, forward assist, detachable um, stock. It's not a fixed stock. This one shoots a little bit better. It's a Colt. I mean, if you know anything about ARs, you know Colts make a very good one. But basically, everybody right now makes ARs. You can get an AR for cheap, 
um, if you're into that thing, if you were a shooter and stuff like that. But um, outside of just going to the range and going on the cruise with my lady and working, I ain't really been on much. Um, I ain't really been like going to bars and stuff like that lately. I've just been doing some major chilling, but uh, just wanted to come on here in case y'all was wondering where I was. You know, I get hit on YouTube and I don't I don't get a chance to respond. Uh, I ain't purposely trying to stay away and stuff like that. It's just duty calls, or I just go to the range and go shoot. Um, haven't been fishing in a while, but you know I'm into fishing too. So y'all gotta, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to enjoy the perks of this life. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'll try to kick out some more videos. You know, there ain't really much out there in the boxing world that's interested into me right now. But uh, I be I try to keep up with a lot of you guys' videos, man. A lot of you guys be just be on it like a mug. You know what I'm saying? I'll be doing a damn thing. So kudos, salute. And uh, I'll just get at you next time I get a chance, man. Holla.